Hello everyone. I'm going to give you a little intro on what to expect throughout this video. The book we chose is The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Licioni. It is a leadership fable about a company called Decision Tech that is struggling to grow and find new customers. The company hires Katherine Peterson to be the new CEO and team leader. Throughout the book, the team members learn how to work together and overcome the five dysfunctions of a team. In this video, you will learn how to behave as a cohesive team, ways to overcome the five dysfunctions of a team, and how to apply them to your own team. Trust in a team requires vulnerability and respect. Lack of trust comes from team members using weaknesses, mistakes, and requests for help against them. Take a look at this. Are you still upset about Jim calling you lazy behind your back? Yes, I can't believe that Jim would say that about me. I know he apologized, but I'll never forgive him for saying that. It's too bad you have to act like you don't have a problem with him because he's higher up than you. I know, and I've never gotten along with him because of his MBTI type. Members of a team with absence of trust hold grudges against each other. The way to overcome this is by offering and accepting apologies without hesitation. Dysfunctioning teams also waste time and energy managing their behaviors for effect. They must focus time and energy on important issues and not politics to overcome it. Jim, how do you think we can improve our menu quality at our restaurant downtown? Well. I think it might be a good idea to put the most profitable menu items in the middle of the page. That's a terrible idea. We would lose money by doing that. Well I would have asked for help with my proposal for today, but no one likes me here. Everyone is out to get me. Teams dysfunction when members hesitate to ask for help or provide constructive feedback. To overcome this dysfunction they must ask for help when needed. Also, it's dysfunctional to jump to conclusions about the intentions of others. Give one another the benefit of the doubt before arriving at a negative conclusion to overcome it. A team displays a fear of conflict when its members avoid disagreeing with each other, because their goal is to get a decision made, and they want everyone to agree and get along. Teams who fear conflict also have groupthink. This occurs when reaching an agreement becomes more important to group members than arriving at a sound decision. Are we all in agreement here? Can we launch this shuttle? Yes. Ah, uh, I guess me too. As discussed in class, the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster occurred because the engineers did not want to upset everyone by expressing their concern for the safety of the mission. This happened because everyone in the meeting before the second engineer, decided for launching the shuttle, and so that engineer didn't want to upset the entire country. Groups that engage in conflict do not care if the information is disappointing. If it is a necessary concern, they will state it especially in a case where lives are at stake. Now that we have discussed fear of conflict, why don't we talk about how to overcome this dysfunction? To overcome a fear of conflict, Lencioni recommends having a designated team member during meetings, who reminds everyone to work through their conflicts and that they are doing something good. That same person should make sure that all conflicts are addressed. The team leader should keep from intervening, when team members are engaging in conflict. The third dysfunction is lack of commitment. Lack of commitment is when a team has no clarity and buy-in. There is no certainty and direction among the team members. This becomes an issue because without constructive conflict, team members are unable to state their true opinions. Therefore, teams rarely buy in and commit to make decisions. Qualities of lack of commitment include ambiguity, lack of confidence, fear of failure, excessive analyzing, and second-guessing. Teams that overcome this dysfunction have clarity and direction for the team, learn from mistakes, take advantage of opportunities, and move forward if necessary without hesitation. It's the end of our meeting time. Let's just go with last year's ed campaign. Okay. Okay. Okay.
As you can see some people may not agree with the decision but they said okay anyways. This lack of commitment to voice your own opinion can be detrimental to constructive teamwork. The fourth dysfunction of a team is avoidance of accountability. The dysfunction refers to the inability of team members to tolerate the discomfort of conflict with other peers. Because the dysfunction stems from avoiding interpersonal discomfort, the main antagonists will be group members with a more introverted MBTI personality type. Teams that avoid accountability are unaccepting of opinions or critiques from other group members. This can create resentment, and a lack of respect amongst team members. Thank you all for meeting with me today. Your feedback was received, but I don't like any of your opinions, I think it would be better to use my original idea, I think it is best. Gosh what a jerk. I guess John can work on the project all on his own since he has the best ideas. I guess my ideas aren't good enough. Do I even belong in this group? Because the team is not upfront and honest with feelings or expectations, a spiraling effect of ambiguity, mediocrity and confusion may begin creating a team with no true direction. Although each group situation is unique, and has its own challenges, overcoming and avoidance of accountability can be reached through, but not limited to, 1. Public clarification, of goals and standards. 2 frequent group conversations, updates, and feedback. And 3, an equal checks and balances system amongst team members. Try implementing team building exercises, like the lost in the wilderness activities we tried in class, in which we, as a team, had to prioritize important survival items. These exercises break preconceived thoughts or opinions teammates may have formed for one another. Exercises allow teammates to be seen on a more relatable level. Creating unity. A team that accepts accountability will call out deficiencies, identify potential risks, challenge teammates on planning and creativity, and establish a high standard of respect. The fifth and ultimate dysfunction of a team is inattention to results. This means caring about something other than the collective goals of the team. A team that suffers from this dysfunction mainly focuses on individual and team status. They get easily distracted, and rarely defeat their competitors. The desired results are not clear to every team member which leads individuals to set their own status and ego before the team, ruining the ability to achieve collective goals. Take a look at this scene. Can you tell me exactly what the PR goal was for last quarter Martin? No, but, I'm sure Mikey can. I can tell you what our product development dates are though. Okay Martin. Then just tell me how we did in terms of public relations activity. Hell, I don't know. I assume that Jeff and Mikey talk about that stuff. That's not my job. I came to meetings every week with my PR numbers and nobody asked about them. I think my department has done remarkably well with what I've had to work with. But your department cannot be doing well because the company is failing and if the company is failing then we are all failing. A team with collective results minimizes individualistic behavior, achieves success, and benefits from each member who subjugate their own goals for the good of the team. A way to overcome this dysfunction is by setting the tone to focus on results and make sure your conversations are consistent with results and not encouraging selfish behaviors. The concepts from this book have been used by organizations to enhance team-based collaboration. An example of such a case comes from a school district located in New York. The school district utilized the five dysfunctions to create a rubric that would be used to better understand teamwork and to develop more effective teams within their district. The rubric includes four key characteristics for teams, clarity of purpose, accountability, team structure, and trust. As you can tell, these concepts align with those of Lencioni's. You can use the five dysfunctions as well as a rubric such as this one to assess the quality of teamwork in your workplace. You could also create your own rubric based on these ideas. In conclusion, make your teams aware of these dysfunctions that can hinder team development and cohesion. Apply the methods of overcoming each dysfunction to make your team.
behave as a cohesive unit, perform at a high functioning level, and succeed in their collaborative efforts. As managers, cohesive teams are most important to organizational success.